So the Act the Graph examples that have been coming through are absolutely amazing. I can't wait to share them on Friday. I'll think about how best to do that and then we'll squish them all together. Uh, today we're going back to division um, as our recap and then we're looking at league tables. Now you'll have to forgive my football bias. I'm a massive football fan and we're using football league tables um, and looking at them. The last task you're going to do is like a problem solving task though involving that skill. So I wonder if anyone will get there. Um, so let's get back to uh, division. So when we first started looking at division, uh, we called the video Memory Lane because we were looking back on previous strategies that you've learned for division. Today we're looking back at that video. So this is Memory Lane of Memory Lane. Anyway, we said if you were doing 80 divided by 2, you're unlikely to be thinking how many 2's in 80, but thinking I'm going to split 80 into two equal parts. The answer of course being 40. Whereas if you're doing 19 divided by 6, you're not thinking, I'm going to split 19 into 6 equal groups, but more likely you're going to be counting up in 6s. How many 60s in 19? I like using matchsticks for that one. 3 remainder 1, 3 lots of 6s, 18, 1 left over. Um, and then when we're looking at, um, at numbers where we go beyond 10 lots of the number we're dividing by, we're likely to start breaking the, those numbers down. And we gave the example 52 divided by 4. We might well split that 52 into 40 and 12, because I know how many 4s are in 40 and in 12. And in, so in total, how many 4s in 52? Uh, there are 13. Then we had a look at some examples like these ones and said, actually, when we're doing division, we're doing it in lots of different ways. So 140 divided by 10, we're likely just to be moving the digits one place uh, to make 14, uh, rather than, again, using any kind of formal method. 140 divided by 7, we could use our times table facts. Uh, 7 times 20 is 140. 140 divided by 6, we, we might well need a written method there to work out how many 6s are 140. I know 20 6s are 120, uh, and then I'd need to figure out how many 6s in 20. Whereas 200 divided by 25, that could seem like the hardest one, really. But if we count up in 25s, 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, 150, 175, 200, that's eight lots of 25. So we can actually answer questions like that by literally by adding on. Um, and then we've got two examples like this one. So four divided by a half. If we understand this as how many halves in four, actually just know it's eight. Now have a look at these questions here um, and rank them by difficulty. Which one's the hardest? Which one's the easiest? Why? How do you calculate them? Do you do it in the same way, different ways? Uh, pause the video, see what you come up with. Okay, let's have a look at them. Um, so 180 divided by nine, you can just use with um, an understanding of your times tables. 9 times 2 is 18. 9 times 20 is 180. Um, 180 divided by 18, if we see the relationship here that 10 lots of 18 is 180, then we can answer that again, almost using our understanding of place value there. Um, 80 divided by 45, I could suggest you could just count up in 45s um, and work out that there's four 45s in 180. And then 180 divided by 8 Actually there, quite, uh, in some ways I think a bit more challenging because I, I would split the 180 into 160 and 20 and that would give me 22 and a half. Just before we get on to the main part today, I wanted to say again a huge thank you to everyone who sent any examples of work through. I'm not going to look at this one in detail, but well done Luke. Uh, it's been brilliant having you joining in and thank you again for sending uh, th this example, just one of the many that's come through. Today is all about league tables. I love my football and league tables are brilliant ways of showing results. So we're really going to dig into how they're built and get problem solve around them. Um, so we're going to start off with this league table. This is the current league standings of the Italian Serie A. Um, and so the way that the league tables are put together, we have the number of games the teams have played. So you can see this isn't the end of the season because they haven't played the same number of games. The number of wins, draws and losses. Um, four is always the number of goals that the team have scored in those 26 games. And against is the number of goals they've conceded. Um, now again, for people specifically if you're not familiar with football, let me explain this. The GD stands for goal difference. Because if ever teams have got the same number of points, then we look at the number of goals in the season the team have scored and the number of goals they've conceded, and that gives you your goal difference. So if a team has the same number of points as another one, the one with a better goal difference is higher in the league. 
Now, the way that the points are calculated is that what we do is every for every game you win, you get three points. So for Juventus, that's three lots of 20. That's 60 points from the matches they've won. You get one point from the matches that you draw. Um, so that makes their other three points. So in total, I've got 63 points. You get no points for, a, uh, for, for losing, I'm afraid. Um, now let me just point out one little thing here as well. So this is AC Milan is the only team here where the goal difference is a negative number. Because you notice here, like Napoli, they have scored 41 goals. They've conceded 36. 41 is more than 36. Well, AC Milan have scored 28 goals, but they've let in 34. And so the difference is six, but they, they've scored six goals less than they've conceded, which is why we have a negative number here. OK, now we're going back to the 2018 World Cup um, and Group E involved Brazil, Switzerland, Costa Rica and Serbia. And what happens is each team plays each of the other teams um, and then the top two teams qualify for the next round. So my first challenge for you is this. In Group E, how many matches must there have been? E remember, each team plays each other team once. Uh, pause the video. How many matches? OK, well, to understand this one, what I would suggest is think, well, Brazil. Well, let's start with Brazil. They will play three matches. They'll play Switzerland, Brazil v Costa Rica and Brazil v Serbia. That's all the matches involving Brazil. Three matches so far. So Switzerland, where we've counted their match with Brazil already. So then they've got a match against Costa Rica and one against Serbia. And um, so that's another two matches. So we've thought of five matches. And that leaves our final two teams. Costa Rica will also play Serbia six matches in total. There they all are listed um, with the scores hidden. Now, um, that was the final league table and that's most of the results. Um, so again, we've got that each team played three matches. We've got the number that they won, drew, lost, the goals for, the goals that they scored and the goals A, the goals against, the goals that they conceded. This is the number of points they had. Remember, three points for a win, one point for a draw. Now, your task now is to work out what was the score between Switzerland and Costa Rica? How do you know? And again, see if you can fill in these blanks in the league table. Pause the video and have a think about those four boxes. OK, well, I'm going to start with the match between Switzerland and Costa Rica. And to do that, I'm going to look. So Costa Rica, well, they did not win any matches. They drew one. They lost two. They scored two goals in total and they conceded five. Let's have a look at their other matches. Well, they lost 1-0 against Serbia, so that's no wins. Uh, and then they lost 2-0 against Brazil. So again, that's, uh, and that's their two losses. So we know that this last match, they must have drawn that one um, in their match against Switzerland. Then if we think about the score, you see here, they didn't score any goals here or any goals there. Um, so, but in total, in the three games that they played, we can see that they did score two goals. Now, we know that the game was a draw and they scored two goals um, overall. They, they hadn't scored any before then, so that result must be two all. Um, I, said, I said it was a bit like doing a logic puzzle, doing some of these challenges. Uh, so Brazil, how many goals did Brazil score? Well, one against Switzerland, two against Costa Rica and two against Serbia. So there we've got five. Um, Switzerland, how many points did they get? Well, they won one game. Uh, so that's three points for that one. They drew two games. So in total, five points. And uh, what about Serbia? How many goals against? Well, let's have a look at the teams who are playing against Serbia. Well, Costa Rica, they didn't score any against Serbia. Um, and then Switzerland, they scored two against Serbia. And Brazil, they scored two. So in total, the goals against Serbia, four. Now, Group F involved Germany Mexico, Sweden and South Korea. Um, and this time, what I want you to do is have a look. So these are all the results from all the matches. The only thing I've hidden in the league table is the top two teams, how many goals they scored. Now, your challenge is this. Pause the video and see if you can work out the um, all the values for all those gaps. And how do you know? OK, well, let's have a look. Well, the thing that we, we, we can work out which two teams uh, were first and second, um, as opposed to which two teams were third and fourth, because there were two teams that won two matches. So let's have a look. Mexico, they won this one here. 
uh, and they won this one here. So one of those teams must be Mexico. And can we find another team that won two matches? Well, Sweden, they won this match here. And Sweden won this match here as well. So it must be, must be Mexico and Sweden, these, these top two teams here. Now let's have a look. One of those teams had two goals against them. And one of these teams had four goals against them. Now I can actually see here, so, so Sweden scored three goals against Mexico. And South Korea, they also scored a goal against Mexico. Germany didn't score any goals against Mexico though. So this team here must be Mexico. And then the top team must be Sweden. So then we've just got to think, well, which one is South Korea? And which one is Germany? Well, let's have a look. Well, they both played three games. They won one, they didn't draw any, they lost two. They both scored two goals. Um, but one of the teams had three against them, one had four against them. So let's have a look at that. South Korea, um, they had one against them here. Um, and then they had, South Korea had two against them there. Um, so they must have been the one with three against them. And Germany, well, South Korea scored two goals against Germany. Uh, Mexico, sc Mexico scored a goal against Germany and so did Sweden. They were the team that were bottom. They won the World Cup the year before. And this year they finished bottom of the group. What a shock. Now, I'm going to show you another league table. Um, and this one, to start with, we're focusing on how we how we calculate, um, how we know how many games a team has won, drawn and lost based on their points. So this is a, a local, very, very competitive primary school league. Um, and it was matches involving St. John's, Peel Lane, Hinley and Crowford schools. So this is the number of points they have. Remember, three points for a win, one point for a draw. Um, so your first task is, um, for each team, how many games they win, draw, and lose. Okay, well, let's have a look. Um, well, we know they've, they've played three matches. Um, and St. John's have got nine points. So the only way you can have nine points is winning all your matches. They won three, drew none, lost none. Peel Lane, they had four points. And to get four points in three matches, they must have won one and drawn one. And that means they must have lost one as well to have played all those three matches. Hinley have two points. You can only get two points by drawing twice. And they must have lost the other one. And Crowford, they've got one point. So what does that mean? Well, no wins, one draw and two losses. Okay, well, the, um, they then played another round of matches. OK, so this is the league table and you can see this is after three matches and this is the league table after four matches. Um, now, if you want a real challenge, you're going to pause the video now and work out who played who and what was the score. And you have the option to pause the video now if you want to. If you want a little clue, then you can keep it rolling. Right, here's the little clue. So St John's played Peel Lane next and Hinley, they played Crowford. Um, so if you've got this far, pause the video, have a look at those two tables and what was the scores in those matches. Okay, let's have a look. Well, let's compare them. So now we've played, they've played four games each and the points have gone up to 10 for St. John's from nine and they had won three and drawn one. So it must have been a draw in their match. And, and similarly, Peel Lane, they've got an extra draw there. It must have been a draw. So we just need to look at the difference in the score. Goals four, well, St. John's, they were on 10 and now they're on 14. The conceded is five and nine. And can you see it's also gone up by four for Peel Lane, goals for and goals against. It was a 4-4 four, four draw. Sounds like an epic match. Um, now, Hinley against Crowford. Well, let's have a look. First of all, can we work out what the result was? Um, well, yeah, actually. Hinley have managed to get their first win. It's another loss, I'm afraid, for Crowford. Um, and then let's see if we can work out, just by looking at Hinley, the score in the match. So Hinley, they had scored six goals, now they've got eight goals. And they had conceded goals against was eight, and now they've goals against is nine. It must have been a 2-1 win to Hinley. So clicking that blue link underneath the video brings you to today's task. Now, task A, have a look at the results from six football matches um, for, for these school teams and see if you can work out the missing gaps. So we know that Ashton are top of the league, Dudden are bottom of the league. Uh, there's two other teams here. How many games have each team won, drawn and lost? The goals for and the goals against. So see if you can work it out there. Um, then uh, part two is actually from the most recent Football World Cup 
Um, now, in, uh, in 2018, England were in a group with Panama, Belgium and Tunisia. And we know that this was the final league table, so Belgium and England qualified. Um, and um, But what I want you to see if you can figure out is from looking at this league table, well, what are those two missing results? And how do you know? By looking at the, at the league table. Now, I've just given you one question for task B. And I think, because I think it's quite challenging. And it's almost like a logic puzzle, as much as it is about understanding league tables. So you've got to have a look at this league table and see if you can work out both which teams are, which are, which team finished where in the group. Um, see if you can fill in the missing boxes here. And can you work out what the scores of these matches must be? So to emphasize, this is the finished league table. And like I say, it's a bit of a logic puzzle. You've got to understand how league tables put together as well. Uh, the answers are huge there at the bottom. Um, so that they're there for you. Um, now, tomorrow we're going to have a bit of a recap and we're going to have a look at some of the amazing things that you've sent through. Be sure to be there for that.